Hello, everybody, and welcome to Angel Meadows. I am Mama D. Durley, your hostess for this evening. And always, because you can't get rid of me that easily, no matter how much you try. My guest this evening um, is Kate. I heard her on a friend's show, um, Cinnamon Moon Show on Blog Talk. Very awesome lady. She always has very interesting guests. And for some reason, when I get to actually hear a full show, I always want that guest on my show. And so Simon has given me permission to to talk to her guests without frightening them. And uh, Carolyn Coleridge uh, was a very interesting guest that you, she had on. And I was like, nah, I gotta. it took me a while to get up the nerve to ask her. But when I did, she said yes. And she's doing us the great honor of doing it. We're, we're fitting into her schedule. So, uh, Carolyn, we're between patients or clients, whichever the one you want to call them. Um, but thanks for being on my show. <laughs> sure, absolutely. This is great. Okay, so tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Oh, mm-hmm. okay, great. Yeah, my name is Carolyn Coldridge, and I am an intuitive um, psychotherapist, and I'm an energy healer, and I've been doing it for 23 years. And I still work at a mental health clinic, a well-known one, and I also have a private practice. Um, where I'm doing um, energy healing. I'm doing a class today on intuitive development. Um, I do readings readings and mediumship, and I'm trying to incorporate spirituality into mental health. Um, And that came all of a sudden because I had a lot of spiritual experiences, but I was a trained therapist. So I'm trying to help people to understand that a lot of these um, weird experiences people have or mental breakdowns or difficulty and mental illness can be connected to some spiritual breakthroughs and how do you help heal them in a more holistic, compassionate way. So that's kind of like my work that I'm doing on the planet. Interesting. Now, when I when I scoured and devoured your, um, your website, I found a very interesting video which I shared. Um, it was, uh, I think it was Dr. Oz, Mehmet Oz, on oh, yeah. the big guy on TV. Uh, that everyone just kind of goes to. He's like, you know, it's very interesting and very awesome gentleman. But there was a, a thing where he started using Reiki in his hospitals before, during, and after surgery. I've been correct. And, and he sort of like put, I remember seeing something about his show one time that they, they were talking about Reiki. And, and you're a Reiki master. Okay, let's see. Amongst other energy healings you do, you do IET. Uh, you are a master and an instructor. You are a pranic healer and you are a theta healing. You have a theta healing practice. Yes. Mm-hmm. I sort of trip over my tongue with those words. Um, but the, on this, the, the video that I saw, it also showed you working at, let's get this right, the UCA, UCLA Pediatric Pain Clinic. And you were, you did uh you did work with a young girl and she was about she was in her mid teens she was a swimmer mm-hmm. and yeah. I thought that was you know I thought I think this I'm still amazed like when I first started Reiki I was amazed that you know about it so I'm still amazed at how people are actually bringing it into their lives so that and that's I thought that was totally awesome is that you actually worked in what 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 a lot of people call a regular hospital, you know, not just for specials, you know, and and it was accepted because mm-hmm. up here in Canada, we're like, we're just getting there. You know, people know about it, but they don't, it's not in the hospitals. And I'm hoping that, I believe that it should get into the hospital. So, like I said, when I saw your video that you worked with it in the hospital settings, I was like, hmm, we must know more. <laughs> yeah. When, well, uh-huh. when did you start working using Reiki and and your healings in an actual hospital setting? Um, so I yeah I joined the pediatric pain program. Wow, boy, it's been a couple of years I've been there, but I was there for six years, mm-hmm. and I met the woman who got me into it. Um, coincidentally, uh, she was working as a PhD at the program, the pediatric pain program started by Lonnie Zeltzer, and uh, it's a pediatrician who actually uses a complementary alternative medicine team to help heal the kids in chronic pain. So we had an acupuncturist, a meditation teacher, a yoga teacher, um, um, energy healer, myself, um, somebody that did cranial sacral, and maybe a couple of biofeedback and other modalities, and we'd all discuss the kids in rounds. 
and then usually I would go to their homes because they were really sick, or sometimes I would go mm-hmm. to the hospital. Um, and there was it was an uphill battle. I mean, I, I think she did meet resistance, but she was real well known and real established there at UCLA, and she uh, started the program all on grants. She got a lot of grants every year. Um, to I think through NIMH National Institute of Mental Health or maybe National Institute of Health, and um, you know it was just something that she felt very passionate about uh, because traditional medicine some of the pain medication was too strong for them, and some of them did have pain medication, so it, it was a way to kind of work with the system to circumvent it, also. But there's a lot of um, there's 13 complementary alternative medicine programs at UCLA, so she's not the only one. Mm-hmm. And it really was about helping um, mind, body, spirit, and trying to address the issues with, you know, energy healing, which I did. And um, a lot of the kids had a lot of emotional issues that are connected to their chronic pain, so that would really help them. And there is there are a lot of hospitals that are starting to use them in the U.S., not a whole bunch, but I think somebody said there's about 30, maybe a little bit more. Um, okay. that are beginning to. And I know that video that um, when I did the CNN uh, show, I didn't realize that Dr. Oz uh, was going to introduce a segment because it was we we're all taped separately, but he uses energy healers in his operating room. And um, yeah. his wife is actually an energy healer. And okay. they said that there's no, there was a lot of positive results that the people who are having cardiac surgery, they have no post, post-operative um, you know, complications. They didn't have a lot of complications with their, um, and no depression, and they all did very well when they had a Reiki healer before the surgery. So the spiritual energy of healing actually helped them heal better post-surgical. So, and then, uh, you know, working at the hospital as part of the team, um, you know, going in to see the kids or really going to their homes and, like, helping them to understand what the spiritual aspect of their disease may be, and to just give relaxation, to give uh, peace of mind. And a lot of these young souls were very powerful. They had a lot of knowledge. They seemed to know what their missions were. I was kind of surprised. It's kind of interesting. Like the soul, they had a challenge of a medical condition, also had a lot of um, work to do here on the planet. You know, mm-hmm. bringing enlightenment. So I think there was like a combination there. So it was really an honor that young girl is. I think she's like 22 now. No oh, gosh, okay. I mean, I know. Well, so I'm long. sharing her video around. She's still a 15 year old child. Ah, right. She's, uh, yeah, she's uh, still on Facebook with me. She's uh, becoming a therapist, actually. Awesome. Maybe she'll use. I think she wants to work with athletes now. So that's kind of like what helped her. That would make. Yeah, that would. Yeah. That's her area of expertise. So that would make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, when okay, when did you first? Uh, when did you first discover energy healing? Uh, in, in general, I think I was when I was in Manhattan. I went to Columbia to get my master's in social work, and I was in working on Wall Street in an employee assistance program as a therapist. And one of my managers, uh, B. Harris, she said to me, um, "You know, you change. And New York is a very intense energy. It's, it can be very draining. It's, you know, people are very direct and they're demanding. And it's an exciting city. I love it. I was born in Brooklyn. You know." Okay. Um, and I was raised in Connecticut, though, but born in Brooklyn. So I love oh. New Yorkers. And but she said, but they they can drain the hell out of you. Um, mm-hmm. So she's a social worker. So she said to me, "You change the energy of the room." And I, when you moved into this office facing the Hudson River, and I'm like, "What does that mean?" And I know she feng shui her office. So I ended up going to. Um, um, she said, "You know, well, energy. You don't know about energy." And I was like, "Oh, what's that?" And I started looking into it because I was getting so drained, like, you know, working as a therapist, mm-hmm. doing other stuff. And I went to an energy healing uh, uh, session in, like, Chelsea in Manhattan, and it was so healing. The vibe, we would meditate, and then we'd talk about energy. We, we, The guy would do healing on you, the different people. And I was like, this is great. And then I got initiated by two women uh, under the Diane Steen, uh, Stein lineage and you know, um, Ushi, you know, and and then it was, okay, great, and I never really used it because Mm -hmm. I was trained as a therapist, I said, what do I do with it? But then one time my client in Manhattan, she was really sick and really depressed, and I really had to, um, you know, help her, and I said, how do I, how could I help her? And I just remembered Reiki, so I, um, and there was nobody in the office, there was no psychiatrist on call, she had a suicide plan, and I was really nervous, and I was a new therapist, so I sent her a Reiki symbol, the Chokore, and I just sent it in from my intention in my mind. And all of a sudden she was talking about her plan, now she's going to end the earth. And 
and she looked at me and said, what did you do? And I said, I sent you a Reiki symbol. And she said, oh, my God, it felt like a wave of good. It felt so healing. I feel so much better. It calmed her down enough where she stopped. Uh, we could contract for safety. She'd have a suicide plan. So that's when I really started to use Reiki a little bit more. Like I would send clients energy in, in sessions without them knowing, and they would either reveal a lot or they would feel calmer. Um, okay. And yeah, and then it wasn't until I moved to Manhattan and to LA that I started to do it more as a, at Agape, the church there. And then I also I did a lot of healing there. They have a lot of different ministries, and I was part of the healing ministry, the well-being. And then also um, I started doing it privately with people. Um, and yeah, and then I got the job at UCLA. So it was a progression. But, you know, we're spiritual beings. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that's cool. Did you find, did your family um, find it difficult when you when you started, when you sort of opened up to spirituality and, and the energies of healing and everything else? Or, or the, like, for me, my family didn't mm-hmm. know about it until I was comfortable enough to tell them. How was your, as I call it, coming out of the closet? <laughs> coming out of the closet. Well, my mother, uh, my mother who just recently passed, actually, God bless her soul, she was a, um, a scientist, and she also was a psychic, so she really, you know, she had a lot of psychic dreams, and she never, like, read people, but she but she would tell us our, our fa- visions of the family, and, you know, she would have, she would see her relatives who had passed on, and she would have visions about me and dreams, a lot of premonitions, so, I mean, that part she knew. Um, and then when I one time her knee was out and I did healing and it felt a lot better on her. So she was open. My mother was open to that, even though she was a scientist. And my dad's a minister, um, but he's also a social worker. So wow. he's aware as a therapist, you know, how energy and healing mm-hmm. works. So he just kind of went along with it. And he actually he said his gra- his great grandmother used to bring him to spirit circles. He's, they're from South America, so maybe they're a little bit open. But spirit yeah. circles, well, what happened is um, she would bring him in, and they would call in the spirits, and they would literally come into the room, and then they would pray with him and do other stuff. That's all he remembered. He was five years old. So yeah. he said there was such a sense of warmth and love, these high beings. It wasn't like anything negative. So my, the only warning was to make sure you stay in the light. It was, <laughs> you know, just do only light work. So yep. they were very open to it. Yeah, I mean, they weren't exactly. They thought I would get an MBA or something, but mm-hmm. you know, considering I have a scientist and a, a medium and a, a therapist and a minister, it kind of combines the spirituality, the mental health, the scientific, and the um, uh, counseling. So it kind of makes sense that I do what I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of like you have you have what people would say, the yin and the yang, you have both sides that fit mm-hmm. together, and there you just fit snugly in between, and it just works. Yeah, right, so you exactly. Got, you got to have that little, you know, which is really cool, because I think it's awesome when people have family that support. You know, mine, mine support, but, you know, they didn't understand because they had to explain it, so you kind of had the, the, they already had the reopening of it, So this, which is totally awesome, and I did see about your mom passing. My sympathies for that loss, oh, but, yeah. uh, like, you know, you know, uh, they're always there. I think yeah. my mother is my mother is with me more now since since she's crossed over than than when she was because we weren't you know close proximity wise. But now it's like I say she doesn't have to wait to get on the train. She, yeah. she's <laughs> there. You know, like I do something stupid and and it's like I know I'll be like you know if mom was here she, okay she's here because I'm thinking about her she'd be smacking you or giving you that look or you know it's like mm-hmm, okay. So you sort of have to fix what you're doing because you're really going over the deep end. So, yeah. but um, Yeah, I feel her presence around, definitely. Like, especially when I do meditation classes at my jobs. I see, I feel her. It's, it's, it's kind of bizarre. It's strange to me. But it's, it's very comforting have, at the same time. Have you ever run into somebody who just kind of was, oh, we're going to have questions in the chat room. It's just, this is from Scott Stevenson in the chat room. Aside from all the other little things he's been saying, um, let's get the question here. He says, here in the UK, our decision makers in our health services are very, very slowly starting to accept things complementary to work along with what they do. But the requirements on the therapists tend to make it that they feel they need to be either doctors or senior nurses who do it. Us lay people are looked upon like quacks and frauds. It's slowly changing. Do you find that with your healing and your the, your health and services healing, et cetera? Um, well, it, I mean, yeah, it was an uphill battle. Was, everyone didn't accept it. I mean, she really pushed it, um, the pediatrician who started it. 
But mm-hmm. I did feel a little bit of a stepchild at some times because of the other people in the hospital are not always open and the other practitioners are not always open because they don't know what it is. I mean, acupuncture is mm-hmm. more proven than meditation and other stuff. Um, but, it, you know, the kids, it, the response of the kids was so positive. They really felt the energy that that would legitimize my work. Um, and I do feel like still people still think it's quacks. It's still, a, you know, there's certain hospitals like Arizona and maybe Massachusetts uh, you know, UMass where they do meditation, where it does um, is more accepted. But um, UCLA is a very conservative, um, research-driven, you know, PhD-driven hospital. So it was really, you know, kind of powerful for her to have the guts to do that. But yeah, no, there's still people that had issues with it, and, and there were parents that didn't want their kids to, like, oh no, mm-hmm. it's just a little weird. They, but the kids loved the crystals and the stones and. I had my little, you know, little group of kids that would really work with it. And I say kids, they were a little bit older. They were about like 9, 10, no, 11 and up, tweens maybe, yeah. like to adolescents. But, yeah, it's still, you know, but I think Dr. Oz's information, and I'm part of a group called ACEP, Association of Comprehensive Energy Psychologists, and there's psychotherapists do, who do healing. And that's also, you know, an organization here. And there's a lot of, um, a part of La Jolla and the uh, Scripps schools, they have a lot of conferences. There's a conference. So there's a lot of different places that are doing things. And California mm-hmm. is probably the big moonbeam. <laughs> you know, it's probably the better, better place to do it, you know. Yeah, it would be. Um, I'm enjoying the the fact that, that uh, healing services are, are becoming more mainstream because then, you know, uh, it, it's. I still find it like I'm still in shock and awe that I can do what I do, and then Reiki does what it does, and it's like I'm still. Sometimes I feel like each time I do a treatment, it's like the first time you get that. Mm-hmm. You, you know, it's like I, I don't need to compensate the 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 confirmation from the the client. I can just sort of see it and feel it. Mm-hmm. So I think that if we as as practitioners keep going, like. Like I said, yours was the first one I saw that was, well, you know, somebody working in the field, in what they call traditional medical field, was working with energy. So I think that's, like, major plus. Because the thing is, is people are still kind of, like you say, finding it hush-hush and, and quacks. And, and I've actually <laughs> had people going, how do you know you're not hurting them? It's like, and then you have to sort of explain it all. So I love it when people get it necessarily. You know, so I try and... and I try and, try and spread the word. <laughs> right, right. It's possible, Dr. you know. I know they try to say Dr. Oz is a quack, but he's a pretty, you know, well. Yeah, exactly. If, yeah. If, if they say, well, like, you know, Carol and Gallridge and Mama D is like, who are those people? Say Dr. Oz. Oh, damn, then it must be real, you know, because it's, <laughs> it's you know, that's Oprah's, that's Oprah's doctor sort of thing, you know. Right, so, right. But, yeah. Yeah, he puts him in the operating room, and his wife's yeah. energy healer. So that, yeah, he says, and he says in the video that it's going to be the forefront of the the change of medicine in the future. So that's pretty powerful. Okay, we're now recording. I kicked myself out of my chat room. Y'all missed. Uh, like, I'm I'm hoping that maybe Jenny can work her wizard magic <laughs> and get back what I missed the recording of. Gosh, only knows. Uh, um, yeah, well, you can take that green off because you hurt my eyeballs. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm definitely going to have to uh, call Carolyn and apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's so not fair. I had a, a rock awesome show, a rock awesome guest, and I had to kick my stupid butt out of the chat room. And there you go. Oh, complete book gonna make me crazy. Yeah, I caught it. Well, thankfully to 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 Scott or Eric or and Eric's yes, thank you. Best show ever, never recorded. That's so neat. Okay, so Sheila and and Lana will both be guests of mine in the future. So now you know what craziness goes on in my show. Are you still willing to be guests? <laughs> And yes, they both said yes. So um, we're not going to talk about who you are and and what you're going to say. To hush, Eric. You just want to be. You and Teddy want to be on the show a lot more. That's all. Um, 
<laughs> Yay, Lana. Yes, my girl. Um, oh, stop pouting, boys. Um, okay, what I, I do this. I read the chat like. I'm on a Facebook Live, but this is not a Facebook Live. This is my radio show. All right. Eric Scott, would you please mic up? Oh, she can whoop you. Thank For you, goodness Lord. sake, what's the matter with you, man? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me in the beginning that I was I didn't record? I wasn't recording. I never noticed. <laughs> that was really nice. People... <laughs> You guys are supposed to have my back. <laughs> Lana, Lana's getting quite um, uppity. She, she is, she is. Wait till she comes uh, on my show. <laughs> my guest, my official guest, not just a guest in the chat room. Well, you're going to have a fun one with her. Something tells me um, she's going to, yeah, she's she's going to be fun. <laughs> Who is busy getting a reading? Me. I was too busy getting a reading to notice that oh, you weren't right. recording. I wouldn't have recorded anyway. She's a funny one, her. I've got three doctors and I've seen Buffy. She doesn't frighten me. <laughs> <laughs> That's more of a challenge. Okay. I have, Poor soul. I have, mm. <laughs> so, Scott. Yes, Scott, dear. Scott, 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 Scott. Yes, dear. Um, in the reading that wasn't recorded, yes. she said that you should step out of your, uh, step into the light more. Not oh, that okay. you're in the shadows, but step into the light more. And the majority, a to come on. Mm, there you go, and you can do that. <laughs> but there's also a majority of the people in this chat room also know not only are you just a hypnotherapist, but you are a hot damn double XL. <laughs> What are you trying to say? Yeah, um, you're a medium. Uh, I put you in a box. Maybe. You're a medium. Uh, okay. Y'all know that when I consider mediums, psychics, and Reiki masters, Reiki practitioners, whatever, healers. So uh, I just I had to put them in a little box. Okay. I won't stay there long. But uh, no. so, do you get anything from anybody in the chat room? Yes. Our nibs, Lana. Mm. She's got a big brown dog with her. It's like Lana. Um, just, hold on a second, Lana. Lana. Lana, darling. Is she awake? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, she, is, she off, is she off washing the dishes or cooking or something? Okay. Is it okay if Scott comes to you? Yes. <laughs> right. It's a big, a big uh, brown dog. It's like a Rhodesian, Rhodesian Ridgeback. It's a big beastie. So it's, um, um, I can't remember the sort of general thingy, but it's a big brown beast of a dog. Um, I'm thinking it's a he. I'm not, I'm not sure. I can't see underneath. So I can't tell for sure. But if it's not a he, then it's a big she. Cause it's, 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 it's very powerful, but I think it's a male. Um, it's jumping up at the couch and it's jumping up at her and it's, but it's her dog. It's somebody. It's a dog that's with her. Does that make any sense? Hung out, two fingers <laughs> typing. Oh, not a cocker spaniel for God's sake! <laughs> not only is she gobby, she doesn't listen. He, he big, said big, it was a Rhodesian, a Rhodesian Ridgeback <laughs> type dog, a big muscly thing, short hair. Um. Big head. In the chat room if you want. Like a like a big pit bull. Oh, this is a baby fish. Here a second. Puppy. Yeah, master. That's the word I was looking for. There you go. Go to there. You'll get to see what they're what they're like. Rhodesian. R H O D. Well, I got Rhodesian. No it's idea. It's still a cutie. All right. Okay. I don't. I, I won't. I won't click it because not click those links. I'd kind of get back in. Same thing. Remember this um, dog. She f it, right now it's, it's sitting on her right hand side by her leg. That's she'll feel it's cold on the outside. It's definitely not a cocker. 
Um, it's definitely a mastiff. No, well, I don't know. She, she never owned a dog, but her childhood dog ha was the same color of the coat. Okay. I don't, I, I don't want to do the making it fit thing and say it's a, a spirit guide animal or whatever, because that's just mm -hmm. that, that's not. I don't think that's right. How it might be, but I don't want to do it along that way. She must know the person that had that dog then. So it could have been somebody who had a dog that she knew. It didn't yeah, have to be she, her. She knew that dog. Um, if she looks back to when she was in the 70s, 80s, that should be quite young then, I'd imagine. Okay, Lana, did you get that? Okay, there's gonna, you know that there's a... Uh, Oh. <laughs> oh, we're not even going as to her age. I'm not saying anything. Nobody <laughs> <wants to say. laughs> She's a child compared to this old bat. Okay. Uh, I'm too much of a gentleman to even suggest anything else, darling. Mm-hmm. I know that. What, Wait. I'm an old bat? Okay. My brother and sister had a dog that looked similar to that. Okay. It's, you'll feel your right leg from the knee down is cold. That's it sitting beside you. There's a situation around you with a person. Um, I don't know whether it's a worker, whether it's a, I don't know what it is, but there's somebody around you that's... It's like a male that's got a crush on you that's not taken the hint. You've been very gentle and you've been very... Um, nice. Next time they start the nonsense, ask your dog to go visit. Is she typing or is she still alive? No, that was me who typed. <laughs> She's sort of wowing. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, um, there's a decision she has to make with work. Okay, um, Lana, if you want, you can turn on your mic. A good idea. But then this way, you like me, you need to. Hi, Sol. <laughs> it's okay, Sol. I forgive you. Ah, oh, look, there's oh, Eric. Eric. That is too. He's, he's in light tonight. He's usually in the dark. Okay, hang on. Let me turn. He must on. have tidied his room or something. Okay, Lana. You're yes. live, honey. Okay, you're live. Hello. So go ahead. Continue, Scott. Okay, there's a there's something going on with work. I think it's to do with a promotion, or it's an upgrade, or there's um, taking on new tasks, new responsibilities. You've been dragging your feet. You've been um, saying, nah, I don't think I can do that, or blah, blah, blah. The usual rubbish. You've It's going to be in your interests to go along that path, because the job that it ends up being is not the job that you initially thought it was going to be, and it's going to really suit you. Yeah, that actually makes sense for where I'm at right now in my life. Okay. And the bloke here that's been a little bit um, a pain in the derriere. Ooh. Okay. Right. Um, just ask your dog to um, enlighten him, and you'll find that he backs off. And just just consciously, just close your eyes for two minutes, go to the loo or whatever, or whatever, if you can sit and do it at your desk or wherever you work. Just get him, get your dog to go and have a word and then sort of patrol an area that you're comfortable with and that blokey will no longer be as interested. Okay, okay that makes sense. It's interesting because uh, th that doesn't really, at least for me at this point, involve a complaint man, but uh, there really is a male spirit um, that I've and, um, I view it in a respectful platonic way, but I've been getting kind of like romantic vibes from him, and it's just like, no, no, I don't, I don't see it like that. Yeah, that brown dog, that big mastiff, he's a big, I keep on saying it's a he, I'm really not sure whether it's a he or a she, but it's a big, powerful beast. It, it'll mm -hmm. do whatever, whatever you want it to do, and 
a sugar dog. It's going to be a guard for you. So send it over and sort him out. Fantastic. Well, if it doesn't have a name already, I'll call him Anubis. Excellent. Nice. Got a name already. Good, good. Nice. Um, the house that we're seeing you in, um, uh, it was... You don't sound British, but it looks like a British um, sort of rented house, um, council house. Um, the big sort of yellowy, flowery wallpaper. So it's definitely seventies, eighties. The sort of leatherette type suite, um, uh, living room furniture, um, and another different coloured carpet. That was for a memory for you. Where the couch is on the. Looking at it on the right-hand side, there's a door into the hall, stairs leading upwards, so I don't know whether that's a memory or something for you or when that dog was about. That could, that does sound like more of a memory, because I'm especially thinking of, I come from a military family, and so uh, there were certain times that we lived in base housing, which, you know, the kind of yes. houses, yeah. townhouses kind of stacked up together. Yeah, um, a base house sounds right. It's not a house that was owned by him. It was a house that was lived in and rented from somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all I've got for you. It's just as important to give you that big brown dog. Um, and you've okay. also got you've also got um a, an eagle owl on your shoulder. Ah, oh, yes, that's one of my favourite spirit animals. Okay. Oh, sh- it's on your shoulder. That's, not, that's, mm-hmm. that's another protective one. And you've got a hedgehog. That's just ridiculous. How can you have a spirit animal that's a hedgehog? Mm-hmm. You've, got a li- you've got a little hedgehog with this, uh, uh, sitting on your knee. <laughs> ah, right. The hedgehog, o- the hedgehog also symbolises you. <laughs> for too long, <laughs> for too long you've been all rolled up your spine sticking outwards. It's now time to unfurl. Like I was told today, it's time to unfurl and go out there and um, do your thing. You've okay. been in, you've, you've been in defence mode for quite a while, and you're no not you're uh, no yeah, longer you no longer need to be the prickly spirit as Eric has mentioned. It's no <laughs> time to it's no time to unravel and be the cute little hedgehog. Right. At any point, you can roll back up again if you need to, but it's no time to unroll and walk about and look all cute and whatever. <laughs> oh, no, that definitely uh, makes sense. I would definitely say I'm a kind person, a good person, but I have started at, like for a good chunk of my life out of a, a sense of self-protection and... Yeah. Right, so now, now you've got Anubis, you'll, when you deal with this spook that's given you the hard time, that will be the confirmation for you that he's there to protect us. I'm saying he, Anubis, is there to protect you. So start using him. And then once you've, once you've started using him and you've seen for yourself that it does what it's supposed to do and it's there to protect you, you're not going to need the armor, you're not going to need the two swords over the back, um, and the shield and, that's quite a nice look with the leather, leather kilt thing with the little plates on and the silver. No, I won't go there. It was um, getting too good then. <laughs> but you won't need that anymore. Right, the armour can come off, the, the sword can be put down, and um, it's now time to go out and... I know, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. But it, it's that it's that sheerer look. You no longer need it. It's very good. But it's not from now. You don't need it now. <laughs> okay, I'm yes. going to save you now, Scott. Shush. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you, Lana. Oh, You're you've welcome. Got, you've, Thank you. You've, you've got an older lady that pops in to give you a hug and just say that she's about you as well. I think it's a gran or um, an auntie, but she's quite old. It's a grand's age, so it's either a grand sister or an older mum's sister. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense, for sure. I got to okay. So she's giving you a big, she's giving you a big cuddle, and um, saying if you need to keep your hands occupied, take up knitting. 
Oh, could you repeat that? Keep her hands off for what? If you, if you want to keep your hands occupied, take up knitting. Oh, take up knitting. Yes, yes. That's my great grandma. <laughs> there you go. All right, that's me. Eric's come. Nana. Nah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm so. Okay, Eric. What was that? Uh, I missed that, Scott. Can you say that again? Yeah. All of it. All yeah. of it. Yeah. No. <laughs> right. What were we doing readings? I just thought you were having a. Yeah, we are, but I, think, uh, I just, I just, I had to make, uh, you know, I had to make uh, Scott step out of his, step out of the shadow, step into the light, because Carolyn told him that's what he was supposed to do, and souls dance is ta- soul destroyers talk about pole dancing to keep fit. Don't even. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Scott's off. That's it. Yeah, we've, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, so what we're doing, readings, okay. Uh, sure, why not? Okay. Uh, yeah, who, who were we doing? Was that Lana? Lana? Yeah. Uh, do, do you want me to carry on with Lana? Or do you want me oh, to if you guys have for Lana, if, if you're... Yeah, I, did, I have, I have Lana. Um, hi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lana, this is Eric. Eric, this is Lana. Thank you meet you. Hi Lana, yes, have you got your head down the toilet? Oh, is that just another one? <laughs> that, was, yes. that was Scott coughing. That was oh, Scott sorry, coughing. that was Scott coughing. I just oh, muted him. It's okay, I muted yeah. him. It's okay. Uh, I just, I um, okay, this... Mm, right, okay. I want to do a little bit of a a, a left turn from, from what Scott was saying. Um, this lady that's just popped in, I think I've got a, a grandmotherly type of vibration that's coming through with her. Um, she's talking to me about pen to paper, pen to paper, pen to paper. So there must be something that's coming up that you have to, uh, some kind of contract or legal legal kind of thing that you need to sign. Is that, would you make sense of that? Yes, it does. Yeah, okay. She's saying, could you please make sure that you actually read it and not just uh, copy sign it? Because okay. I think there's stuff in there that you need to actually understand. All right. I don't know. I don't know if you work with spirit or if you deal with spirit, but I've got a lot of um, when Scott was running through your spirit totems or animals that are with you. I had this feeling of immense strength and power that's linking you to the spirit world. So if you work with spirit, that's what's coming through very loud and clear at my end. Yes, I am a psychic medium. Yeah, that thought so. Say so preaching to the choir, really, isn't it? You know, when you're talking to one year old, <laughs> but uh, and then you, and then you get Scott. So that's it. Um, but the thing is, <laughs> Scott, you're not going to put that back in your mouth after doing that with it. I can beat you with that, Scott. That longer time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> no, I've, I've got, I've got it. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know Scott's come. Scott's come through with a whole load of different animals, and I, I hate to add to your menagerie. Okay. But I have, I have a wolf. And I have this wolf because obviously wolves are solitary animals, but they come together to hunt. And I've got a feeling that there's something coming around where you will be part of a group with your work. So um, I know that I work singularly, but there's times when I work with a friend of mine as a rambling medium. And we, we then do another show where we'll have six or seven um, people on uh, the stage and just uh, jam and just just see what comes through. And I've I've got a feeling that they're going to work with other people as a part of a group. That definitely resonates. Okay, um, I feel as if um, you've been doing this for a while and you're getting to the stage now where you're looking for things to stretch your psychic muscles. Yes. And I feel as if there's some things that you're coming along and it, the, the day to day, um, yeah, the day to day, one to one readings, things like this, as much as you enjoy doing them and they, they fill the time in and they do everything else, it's not stretching you. And that, that spirit's trying to tell me that there's, there's a new pathway coming. I'm always being told that, and I always look back in horror. But the thing is, though, <laughs> that I do feel it yeah, because I'm a complete man. I mean, you know, I yeah. tell everybody, I tell everybody, you can call us what you like, just don't call us late for dinner. But the thing <laughs> is, though, that you know, it's it's not uh, nearly choked, and I want it there. <laughs> um, it's it's as if I, I want to take you off with a diagonal. 
Okay, I want to take you off of the diagonal. I want to take you off that. There's something coming that's associated with what you do now, but not the same. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it's going to stretch you. And that's what you need. Because I feel as if, and I don't want to use, when working with spirit, it's really hard to try and, um, uh, you know, not to use the cliches that everybody else uses, but, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing and a wonderful, wonderful thing that we have nurtured and, and brought forward. But I've got to say, it's feeling stale for you. I've got to feel, a feeling that like, yeah, it's, it's there and we're doing it, but, it's the same old, same old, you know, and you and you're looking for some way to to up the game, because spirits always looking for ways to to connect with people, different and, and more diverse ways of connecting with people. And as such, there's things rolling around in your head that have been on a back burner for a while, but I've got a sneaky feeling they're coming to the front burner, and that's what that uh, thing that needs to be signed is all about. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That all. Resonate. I've been having the feeling lately, in particular, of the fact that even though, yes, being a psychic, being a medium, being intuitive is all a part of who I am and what I'm here for, there's been this feeling that spirit has gotten like, oh, just you wait. There's this other stuff that we have that's coming for you too, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's that's the thing. The other stuff, and but the, they don't quite give you that cool thing <laughs> they just go there's other stuff coming and you have to sit there and wait in trepidation because you know when it arrives it's going to arrive very quickly and then all of a sudden you're going to be taken off doing something else why who's who around you's got the um got the hospital appointments coming up um let's see i can't think of anyone immediately uh, yeah there is hospital points yeah, there is. It's either doctors or hospital appointments, but it's some kind of going on follow on tests. Goodness, I'm going to have to take note of this and see. Because I can't yeah. of anybody, mm-hmm. but yeah. It's somebody, and I've got to put it in the circle, in the family circle, but I don't want to put it like on your knee. So <laughs> it's got to be somebody in the family circle. Just watch for it coming up. Um, and I also feel as if. That there must be a situation around it about you, and I have to take it slightly further out to maybe your friends, your circle of friends. But somebody's going, somebody's in a relationship where one half's trying and one half isn't. Circle of friends, relationship with one half trying and one half isn't. Uh, trying to think of any friend group. Well, Oh, you, you can, you can. Let's let's narrow this down a little bit further, okay? Mm-hmm. I would never used to have to say this, but I have to now. It's it's a male and a, a male and a female, all right? Mm-hmm. It's not a same sex relationship. But the thing is, though, that it's the person that everybody thinks has a perfect relationship, but you know they don't, and it's the one where everything's all right as long as she agrees with what he says. Oh, okay, that makes it a bit clearer, yes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, it's amazing what a fat bloke in the North East knows, isn't it? And it's, um, <laughs> no, that's not marriage, mate. It's, 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 uh, it's a little bit more than that. Um, you usually end up in somewhere with uh, bars on the windows if you, if you go along that line. You know. Oh, sorry, you have, haven't you? Bars on the windows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just his, just his colour scheme, I was looking at it. Sorry, I thought it was a cell. Um, oh. I'm going to get killed anyway. Yes, you are. Mm. Um, I, 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 why have I got caravan holidays? Okay. Caravan in in it would be a Winnebago type vehicles in the states. Caravan is the UK. Uh, it's interesting. Well. I- I went during uh, Carolyn's uh, speech. I was briefly looking at the Find Horn website just because of it. That sounds familiar, and they have about uh, living in the Caravan Park and uh, growing vegetables. So I don't know if you're picking up on my research of that, but also lately I've been thinking I need a holiday badly. Right. Okay. Well, in the UK, if you really would need a holiday and you're feeling a bit lucky, you can go up and 
get a caravan. And as, as, as Scott says, it's like a toad metal tent. And, it's, <laughs> and the thing is that because of our English weather, you're more than likely going to need a boat to, um, to, <laughs> to, to, to keep it, keep it dry. <laughs> and, um, you know, but the thing is though that, that I've, I've got a feeling as if there's, oh, all right then, okay. Um, have you been thinking between now and the end of February that you need a short break? I'm talking about three or four days away. Oh, it, it was a bit longer out, but similarly, I've been thinking about, well, I will be moving near the end of January or early February. You're not moving to somewhere where there's a, like, a, like a stream, like water running past, are you? No. Right, okay, then that's where you're going for the break. Okay. All right. Because I'm seeing like water running past, and I'm seeing like either a, a, as I would put it, a caravan or an RV or something parked beside this stream, or a cottage beside the stream, something like that. You know what I mean? That that, that they're there and it's it's something a little bit different. Um, who's got? Have you got bad back? My back is pretty good, but I have had some pain. Um, yeah, because yeah, they're, they're, they're talking about they're talking about the fact that um, that, that you're 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 living through it. Okay, it's um, yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to go down that because it wasn't as big as that scope. Never mind. Um, it's I feel as if your back needs to be worked on. Uh, it's I've got that your back can be helped, but I feel as if you spend quite a lot of time being your own boss and um yeah, you know, what's what's gonna happen. Um could you just could you just make sure that you just get it looked at? Okay, yeah. Okay. And somebody, somebody has missed their appointment at the gob shop. At the, at the dentist's. Okay. He has missed their appointment. I did miss my recent appointment. Yes. Yeah. Um, and. Right. I've got a gentleman that's just come in because I was desperately trying to break the link so we can move on. And we've got this gentleman that's just come in. And the gentleman stepped forward. Now, I don't know if this gentleman is linked to you or not, but I've got like a a clergy or a preacher or a some kind of religious figure. I can't think of anyone directly related to me who's a clergyman. Right. Because I'm being told, I'm being told he, he's just told me he's a pastor, and I thought that mm-hmm. was something that came out of Italy, and you had with cheese and meatballs. But never mind. Anyway, he said he says he's a pastor. <laughs> you know, and and he's he's talking about. When when he was a pastor, he used to give weird and off the wall type of sermons, sort of like this reading, really. And it's off the wall type of sermons. And he he said that that you work very much like that yourself. What goes into your head comes out your mouth. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you don't understand why you're saying it, but everybody who's in front of you does. Mm-hmm. And he said, please don't change because that's a good trait, except if you're talking to a policeman when you've been going too fast. <laughs> because somebody around and about you has a very heavy foot on the accelerator. Uh, that would be me. I know who it was, but I just was trying to be nice. <laughs> okay, um... Teddy's, Teddy's my guide, by the way, and when I do readings, he, he disappears across and comes and sees you. Um, what's the picture on the wall, the big picture on the wall? I don't know if there's a lot of people in it or if it's a portrait picture or something like that, but he's talking about the pictures of people on the wall. Okay, the one picture that I think that comes to mind, it's in my mother's house, um, and it's a collection of uh, most 
mostly family photos and a couple of uh, other photos related to uh, vacation. Right. You're not sitting in your mother's house, are you? No, I'm living in my own apartment. Yeah, exactly. That's why he's there with you and not in your mother's house. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's talking about a picture on the wall, unless he's just wanting to try and bring something forward. All right. Is there a picture in your apartment that keeps moving and you've got to keep straightening it up? Actually, let's see. Well, the closest thing is, like, it's not a traditional picture, but it's um, a magazine that I have on my altar that it kept on moving, and I had to finally just lay it flat because it would just slip. Right, because he's talking about the fact that there's a young child there with you in the in the apartment. Oh. Now, he's placing the young child at between the ages of three and five. My guide is an idiot. I mean, I would have said four years of age. But no, Teddy puts it between three and five. Because he's an idiot. Right, and this this young child, she's, she's a, lovely, a lovely soul. Um, I feel as if she passed um, with either pneumonia or some kind of chest complaint or something before the times when antibiotics were freely available. And she's she's around just to boost your empathy and to boost your um, your healing and your ability to project that healing, and that's what she's there. And she's just there to to uh, to, to boost that. Um, asked what her name was, and she said it doesn't matter. So. There you go. It's just a young child. Uh, oh, she's responsible for the um, for the keys being moved. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> and and it's usually it's usually when you're in a hurry because she thinks that's yes. really funny. Oh yeah. my god. No. You, you did that the other day. I don't know if you're going to do readings or if you're going to go and meet somebody, but you couldn't find the keys. And then when you went back, they were in the first place. You really looked, but you just went freaked out. So she thought that was hilarious. No, but honestly, there have been multiple times where, it, and it's always when, when I've been afraid that I couldn't find my keys, and then when they turn up, it's in a place where I'm like, either I just looked there and it wasn't there, it's physically been there. Yeah, it's it, this is spirit. Spirit find it really hilarious. And I've only been working with spirit for 54 years now, and I still don't realize, you're trying to get them to admit that it's really not that funny. You know, <laughs> well, they think it's, they think it's okay. Um, and and also, bless you. Um, I'm I'm going to say that they're telling me you need to change your diet. Mhm. Yeah. But not not cosmetically. This is medically. I feel okay. as if um, there's a sluggishness and a bloating kind of feeling, and a slowing of the mental processes. So I don't know if it's irritable bowel syndrome or if it's colitis or if it's something I could possibly even be diabetes, but I just feel as if there's something that you need to change your diet for because um, it needs to get sorted so you get your energy back. That's been a recurring message that I've gotten from Spirit about needing to uh, change my diet specifically to help me feel better. Um, yeah. And I do have a history of gastrointestinal issues. It hasn't necessarily been anything well diagnosed I've ever received it, but I've always had a history of upset stomachs. Right, okay. I've got to give you, okay, I've got to give you the memory of a, somebody's passing the spirit just before Christmas. Memory of somebody's passing. Yeah, it could be years ago. It's just that, that somebody's come in and just given me, just flash the calendar back to the end of November, beginning of December, as a memory of somebody's passing the spirit. Hmm. Now there's, so a couple of people in spirit that I, I uh, have been communicating with or have been uh, sending signs to me, they weren't people I knew personally, but they definitely did pass away. Uh, this, is, this is somebody, this is somebody that you knew. This is somebody you knew. And it had to be in, at the start of December, and it was a gentleman. Just have a think about it, because it's, um, it's, it's getting, it's getting this, this gentleman's going, ah, I shall remember about, uh, you know, the usual okay. thing. 3.33 3. in the morning when you sit bolt up right in bed, as you normally do. Um, 
And also, I've got to go forward. There must be somebody's birthday coming up here on the Earth plane. Um, yes, with some of my friends. There's a oh, yeah. and my mother. Birthday yeah. coming up soon. Yeah, and also um, there's somebody's anniversary as well here on the Earth plane. Yes. Yes. And um, there must be a special either birthday or anniversary in the summer, which is um, marked by a special number. Like a, it's either an 18th or a 21st or a 30th, 40th, 50th, whatever. And it's either a yes. birthday or, yeah, because there must be a big party being planned around there and you're not sure if you're going to be able to get what you want. Okay, yeah, I think so, sound, Scott's yeah, sound is gone. Scott's sound's gone, has it? Oh no! That's okay, Scott. he'll be there. He's still there. I can't hear nothing. That's probably because you're freaking muted. Hold on, do it again. I love it now. You muted yourself, didn't you? Oh. Yeah, goon, that's my move. Okay. <laughs> I thought he was sounding the best he'd sounded all night. Wait, is that a back now? Is it, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Is it yeah, even right. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, Scott, why don't me and you take over the show? Just let her sit there. <laughs> I'll just sit there. Sit I here think she's, there. Due, she's due for medication or something. <laughs> I think she's had her medication. Have you seen the state of her eyes? <laughs> <laughs> right, like holes in the snow. Okay. <clears throat> well, no, thank you very much for letting the boys <laughs> read for you. Give you a message. You're very welcome. Thank you, Scott and Eric. You're welcome. I, you're, I know. You're most welcome. <coughs> Two people oh. in the chat room had, had piped up that they would like reading, but I, I got a, I got a message that somebody has a message for Sheila. Sheila, would it be yeah, okay? That's me. that's me. Sheila, um, can you take an old lady, very slim build, short brown hair, possibly curly, Always wore a Mac, uh, a raincoat, and a, and a not a carrier bag, but one of these bags for life type bags that old ladies sort of uh, carry. Okay. She has no mic because her husband stole her, her her headset so he could listen to music. I was like, how rude! Sheila. Yeah. Okay. Well, she was a very quiet lady, very um, honest remain. Um, she'd blend into the background. Um, she was just not a lady that stood out. No, it's definitely for Sheila. Sorry, so. I know she's your, you've written that she's, she's your ex mother in law, but <laughs> you. You had a reasonably good relationship with her when she was here. Um, this lady's, although she's quiet, she's very full of energy. If she's out in the street, she would barely speak to anybody. She wouldn't really have any eye contact. Um, but in the house, she was more open, still quiet, but more open and, and dependable. Does that sound right? Okay. Not passed before she knew her. <coughs> we don't have, we don't, so we don't have dead air time. I'm going to read her answers out loud so that everybody who just listens to the MP3 will also get the answers. So she said her, her aunt passed before she knew her. Okay, the, the important thing is there's a baby, a baby in spirit, and I don't know whether it was, it wasn't born alive or whether it died very young. But it's a young baby, and I think it's a girl. I think it's a pink blanket is wrapped in. Okay, start because I didn't hear you. Say again? That was Sheila. Sheila's now mic oh. up. Go for it. Hurrah! Yeah, start over because I didn't hear you. Right. right. Uh, we're right from the very beginning, or? No. Something about a okay. little girl there's, or something? There's a, I've got a baby. She's we either was stillborn or she died quite young. I'm sure it's a girl. I'm sure it's a pink blanket that she has. 
Um, she's either yours or very close to you. The reason why this this lady, whichever of your relatives it is, is in, is to let you know, so either you know or you can tell somebody close to you that she has her. All right, the baby's um, fine and, and the baby's with this lady. Um, my mother, my grandmother passed away. One was a, was a girl. Uh, give me that again, pardon? Oh, my twins that passed away at birth, they were a girl and a boy. Okay. This is a, a young girl that was born around the, I want to say, 70s again. In the 70s. Yeah. I know my mom had a miscarriage in between me and my brother. She was six it's, months. Okay. It's either yourself or it's somebody very close to you. Um, and they've been worried and threatened about this baby. Is it okay? What happens to it once it's passed? It's going to give them a lot of comfort for them to find out that this wee lady in the long mac um, and little shopping bag has her. She's got her enfolded in her arms and she's looking after her. So the okay. baby is safe. Right? So whoever that's for, there's lots of tears at the moment and there's going to be even more when they hear about it. But it, it's something that's really going to help because they've been worried. They've been scared. Okay. And I think it's it's just it's, it's, it was one of those things that at the time it was never really discussed. There was never any counselling. There was just pull up your socks and get on with it type attitude really. So it's been carried for a while but the tears and the emotions and probably health have all been a lot because they've been concerned, they've been worried, they've been thinking, they've been whatever, they need to know. So it's important that they get told, all right? So you know, you do know who it is. You, it's somebody close. And okay. Just to, they just need to know this. It's a, I, I don't see twins. I just see one baby, and I'm sure it's a girl. Okay. And I think it was. It looks about the right size to be um, full term. So I presume it's either born, stillborn, or died very soon afterwards. Oh. It was full term or not? It was, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, that we that we lady um, with her was a an old man, bald head, bit of hair around the sides, wore a sort of suit jacket. Um, I think he was in, into. I think he worked with his hands as a sort of engineer or worked with metal. Um, okay. A short, a short guy, very happy, smiley. A round, sort of, um, slightly pink-cheeked face. Always had a smile in his eyes. A real nice, real nice guy. And I think he's with her. That makes okay. sense. Mm. I'm trying to think. The I'm only fine. person... Um, I really didn't have a lot of interaction with my family growing up. So the only person that I would think of, it could be... My husband's dad. Okay. You have a picture of him with his, it's not a suit, but it's a sort of a, a blazer jacket thing, a sort of tweedy thing, working man's uniform sort of thing, but a jacket. Um, the sort of clothes you'd see the old, old grandfather's era, era and after the war, what men wore to go to work. The, the, jump, the jumper and the shirt underneath um, and they took this blazer off and possibly even a flat cap that sort of thing wasn't, it wasn't office based, he worked his hands and I think I'm seeing I think I'm seeing skyscrapers and um, building the steels or working with the steels my, ex, my husband's dad was a a, la uh, a lineman for the uh, phone company could be that. I don't know. Sorry. I'd like to. I'd like to just grab it and say yes, please. I'll have that. But okay. I think you'll. I think. I think it'll come to you. Um. Soon. You all know who he is. But the reason he's in is just really to bring some laughter. There's been an awful lot of um, 
not unhappiness, but just general downness around you at the moment and for a wee while now. He's in to bring you a bit of a lift, a bit of a taking you by the elbow and helping you laugh and giggle and smile again because it's been a wee bit, a wee bit long since you've been doing it properly. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a situation around you at the moment. It's been going on for some time and you've been putting a couple of um, what ifs and planning alternatives and um, if I do this, I could do that. If I don't, if I don't do this, this will happen. All those sort of thoughts have been going through your head. The I think he's there to also just to give you a little nudge because you actually do know what's the best thing you need to do in this situation at the moment. All right, you do actually know. You. It's a decision that you know that you need to make is one that's going to be a little bit ooh, and flying by the seat of your pants, but it's going to be okay. Right? Mm-hmm. So you have free will to do exactly as you need to do. You can uh, make any decision you want, whether you decide to follow that advice or not. You have the. It's your decision. But if you do make the decision, it's going to be okay. If you don't make the decision, it will also be okay because you will find your way through whatever it is that's going on and you'll get there eventually. If you make the decision that you know you need to make along the route or the road, the path that you have been seriously thinking about but are a bit worried about, it will probably be shorter, harder but shorter. Okay? Uh And you need to laugh some more. So you need to be in Darlene's radio show every, <laughs> every Sunday night and you'll be giggling away, but you need to do more of it, right? Because just now it's all been a bit heavy, all a bit black. Um, get some March, <sighs> yellow flowers, daffodils, get some flowers in. Just put them around in various places. Um, start brightening up your house a wee bit because the place that you spend most of your time has gotten a bit tired so you need to brighten it up with some flowers and open the curtains more and do all that sort of stuff yeah. it's going to get better and you will get there okay I would, I would invest in some more hankies some tissues because oh. there, probably will, there probably will be quite a few more tears yeah. but, it's going to, but it's going to be okay Whatever you decide to do, it's going to be okay. And you do know what to do. Um, you, I don't know if you use them or um, whether you know how to use them, but there are a thousand crystals. A thousand is something you need to look into as well. Okay. Start, start working on it and get your cards back out. Um, they've been tucked away and getting a little bit dusty too much as well and if you're not already then the you're a bit of a medium and intuitive and I'm seeing something like teacups that's mm. something you need to be sitting talking to when you get your when you get a like-minded friend in get the teacups or get the loose tea out in the teacups out or read coffee grains or whatever, but it's, it's all those old-fashioned type things sitting at the dining room table or the kitchen table and sitting doing little readings for each other. I think there's a lady, um, I think she's blonde or light coloured, light brown hair, um, a nice sort of jolly, jolly friend that you used to spend a lot of time with, you haven't spent so much time with her recently. You need to reinstate that contact just to help you to talk to you to get you to start working and doing things that you used to do again. All right. Hold quiet again. I knew it. I think there's a. I'm here. Okay. I so, just have a lag time. Okay, that's fine. Um. Okay. Um. If did you have any questions for Scott? Um, I've been having 
Sorry? Let me type it. Yeah. Okay. She's been having health issues. <laughs> okay, you can try talking as well. But uh, do you have anything on her for her health issues? I don't know if it's just mine or whether she's also got a um, lower back pain, something around the right shoulder, um, a bit of breathing, a bit of breathing going on, a bit of sort of chest in this, a bit of tightness. Um, I think the person that you would sit and do pull, pulling cards with or doing a wee bit of mediumship with or that sort of thing. I think she also does healing or you also do healing. That would be it. That would help. That would help everything. That would help a lot. But uh, um, other health issues, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't seem to get anything from that one. Okay. You do need to be a little bit more gentle on yourself. You expect an awful lot more of yourself, as we all do. You expect an awful lot more of yourself than you do of anybody else in your life or anybody else that you'd meet. And the advice that you'd give those people who are in this, who were in a situation that you're in, start giving it to yourself and listening. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> What about my kids? Do you see anything with them or anything I need to be aware of? I think any reading that you get at the moment is all to do with the situation that you're in. The one that's been giving you a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of tears, a lot of thinking, a lot of ache. Any reading that you're getting is going to be focusing on that because it's, that's the big thing that you need to worry about at the moment. or That's, a big, that's the thing that you need to consider at the moment. Give that your energy. Everything else is ticking by. Everything else is they're coping, they're managing, they're getting on with things. But you're using them as a distraction so that you don't have to do the thing that you know that you need to do. All right? So the reason I feel tonight is just focus on you. It's your time. Because once you're sorted, once you've got things the way that you've that you're in a better place, um, you can then use the energy that you're using just now just to cope and to worry and do all the other things to help other people around you achieve what they need to achieve. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I, I understand that. Okay. So start thinking of you. Everyone else will be okay. If you vanish tomorrow, into an into a alien spaceship, yeah, they'd be a bit upset, but they'd cope. So they don't need you to micromanage everything they do. Right? So step back a wee bit and focus on you, because once you're, once you're sorted, once you've got things at least moving along the way that you know it so needs to move. So we're planning on moving in, in a couple of months. Okay. Do you see that to fruition? I don't know. I'd like to say yes, obviously. I just, I don't know. I think there's, there's, other, there's things that you have to decide first for that to happen. That's one, of, that's one of the routes that you know is available to you if you make the decision you choose to make. Okay, well, it is time for us to go. It is now a shorty. No, it's okay, don't apologize. You know what? <laughs> Uh, Soul Destroyer, um, the next time we have an open show, I will make sure that you come back and you will get a reading. I'm sorry, missed it. Um, but you know, you know how things are great. It's not this is not pal talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Sheila, for allowing Scott to to give you that message. Sure. I hope uh, uh, we need to talk. Uh -huh. Um, Tracy, you were late, but you were still here, so thank you very much. Fellini, 
and Scott and Soul Destroyer and Tracy and just everybody who showed up, whether you're still here or you're listening in the archives. Um, everyone behave, be good to yourselves, and uh, just be happy. So, before you go, so, before you so. go, before you go, one very quick thing, the back near side tyre, the brakes, that whole assembly thing in there, you need to have a wee look at that. And if you're not a mechanic, get somebody who can to have a wee look in there because there's something going on that you need to sort out before you end up in a ditch somewhere. Back, near side. Is that tire that? Was... No, that's for Seoul. Okay. Uh, I was like, what? Just get it done. <laughs> Silly man. Anyway. Good night, everybody. Night all. Love you.